Hello everyone, welcome to part four of OpenAL. I'm going to show you some positional and directional stuff. So the big changes are, I've made a file called top-down, and it is just a top-down OpenGL grid-like effect. And what I've done is I've added two players. There's a blue and a red player. The red player will be playing a sound, this sci-fi sound, and it's set to looping as true, and its position is its position. So each little cell in this grid is one space, or one OpenGL unit. And as our listener, we have set the tunation to AL inverse distance clamped. And if we just take a look at that in the main programmer's guide, it shows the formula, and it also tells us the default mode is that. There are a whole bunch of different models. And so we set that, we set the location to our location starting out, which is just at zero. We are starting our player at zero. And the orientation of our player matters too. This is what direction we are facing. Now our up vector is Z1. So we're essentially, if you use the right hand rule and look at your hand while wow, it's like, you know, gun thing pointer, and then this, this would be your X. So X is to the right, negative x is to the left. We're essentially looking straight down on this, except this is up. So we're rotated like so. We have x to the right, we have y going up, and we're starting at 0, 0, and the other player is going to be at max, max of the grid, which is way up here. So it's kind of like the top right quadrant of a grid is what this grid is. And you'll see as we move towards and away from the sound, it will change. Now it'll seem pretty drastic because when we're changing direction, when we change direction, it is a very sudden shift of a 180 from looking up to looking down or a 90 degree turn looking left to right. So we're not having gradual turn like this is set for. We are just doing this sound in a grid, but this way you'll be able to hear the difference and be able to think of each of these uh, grid spaces as one unit, so you might have to adjust the attenuation according to your game engine and how you how you want the sounds to fall off. All right, so let's go ahead and hit play. Now, the one thing to note about this that's kind of important is you can't actually see the direction of the player in the visual. It's just a blue square, but the last direction you pressed is what direction you're facing. So I need to update that and make it like some kind of pointer or triangle or something that rotates but I just haven't got around to that. So here it is running. And we're starting out as this blue square looking up. So we can hear the sound sort of on our right. You can hear it in my headphone. I don't really hear it on the left at all. So if we move to the, yeah, I get rid of this. So if we move to the right, we'll suddenly be facing right and the sound should be on our left. So I'm gonna move right. Now, since we're facing right, the sound is on our left. And now if I press up and move to this square, I'll be facing up, so it should be on our right again. And so on. So I will be able to dance around through here. And once I get really close, or right on top of it, I'm right on top of it, it's all over both sides. But let's start moving away to the left, and we should hear it fade off behind us pretty directly. Yeah, there we go. So that's it directly behind. And let's come towards it. So I'm going to press right. And once I start going off to the sides, it starts uh, bouncing between left and right, depending on which direction I'm facing. So I'm changing direction a lot. So as you can see, it works pretty well. And all the way over here would be like, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine units away, I think. Or maybe it calculates to and because it's diagonal, I'm not really sure, but somewhere around 9 and 10 OpenGL units away reduces the volume pretty significantly. And I assume that is full max volume just being right on top of it. We're both at the exact same position mathematically. Okay, so I'll just show you those functions I added real quick. Uh, let's go sound effects. Okay, so on our sound device, I added a couple new functions. There is a set attunation. We just want to set that 
to make sure it's picking up. You, um, I'm not sure if you have to set this for it to engage, but it's a good idea too. We have set location to just set our little rule location, and we use that anytime we move. We have set orientation. We also use this anytime we move. This sets your looking at direction. So this is usually a front vector. And this one is an up vector, so it can kind of tell if your head is tilted or whatnot. Uh, I'm, we're just keeping it the same the whole time with the Z as the up vector. And I'm not using set gain, but it's there, and I've added some getters too. And if you look at these implementations, they are just calling to the AL stuff. So that orientation sets it up how it's supposed to be and sends the data on over. Same with the set location. I'm not doing any error checking here because based on what you're passing in, it should be impossible for it to fail. Uh, but in general, we want some error checking. I just didn't go through all the extra time of structuring that all out too. I just kind of made it do the thing, but it should be pretty safe the way it is. I did set a, it was pretty easy to make a little guard on the uh, set detonation because there's only certain viable models. So we just make sure whatever key they pass in is between those models, and if it's not, we just throw because we don't want to continue. So uh, let's see. Yeah, all those. Okay, in the sci fi sound, there's set looping, set position, and just play. Now, that's just, just part of a sound effects player. So you want one player per source. Uh, generally, this one can play different buffers. You just don't want to overlap the buffers. Like, you don't want to switch it while one's playing because that'll cause some, some bugs. Um, so if, if you want a bunch of different sound effects, often you want a player for each, but if they are sound effects that cannot overlap anyway, but they're different, uh, I guess you could swap in between the same player. And as our main, which that runs the game, we're just using that main loop. We're setting a run condition. It's a function we call in grid game. We're adding to on begin. Just anything we want to happen once at the start, we have a couple things from the grid game. We have process, map, change, and init. And on our delta update, we want to process the player. It's delta because there is a timeout on how fast you press the keys. That way you don't like zoom across the map a million miles per hour. Um, so that's really the only thing that is needed. I did have an AI in at one point of the little red square moving around and doing things, collecting stuff. But it uh, was a little complicated with the OpenGL, so I left it out. I might add it in later if I'm so enthused. And of course, this is open source, so anyone is welcome to mess with it if you want to add any cool little thing that makes it better. That's always good. And on post update is just what happens after all these delta updates. It's kind of like the render time after everything's updated. And the only thing we have is our render scene function from grid game. And then we just call that main loop. Uh, run or yeah or return it even because it's gonna ask whatever it is should return a zero only if one of these functions returns something else that it could uh return something else okay i feel like there's something else i should show that i haven't shown well i guess you can go check out this code it's on github link will be below and yeah that's it for this episode hope you have uh, learned how to do this setting of the things and understanding of distance and open EL, AL a little bit, the orientation and stuff. I'm aware that this could be a whole lot more worked up, but I, uh, I don't exactly want to get into talking about all the OpenGL stuff too much as it's not the focus of this video. Uh, basically, I just pulled some basics of uh, loading a basic shader and stuff. I can rewrite the code. I just reuse stuff from other places that already had it because it's pretty easy to find a good source just to get basic started with OpenGL if you're not sure. Well, there's a few of them out there. The OpenGL tutorial, dash tutorial.org one is pretty nice. And there's Learn OpenGL. All of them get you started pretty well. Another thing that is important to mention is the sound you use does have to be a mono sound. You can use Audacity to help you figure that out. So what you can do is if you get a file, I'll show you with this one. I'm using this sci-fi drone file that came from opengameart.org. If you drag it in, you'll see what it looks like. And as you can see, that's a mono sound. If, for example, you have another sound, let's try this one. 
That's a mono sound. If you see two sound waves right next to each other, it's probably not mono. So I think maybe one of these is a stereo sound. Yeah, so that is a stereo sound there. If you try to do the whole orientating and it just doesn't work at all when it should be, check your sound because these stereo sounds just do not work. So if you don't want it to have any distance a tuning and just be like an ambiance or something, you want to do it as a stereo sound uh, for that reason. But also, you have to be careful because, yeah, you just want to make sure you're using all mono sounds when you're doing distance stuff. And so probably all your sound effects or speeches or whatever that your characters are given that are orientated, you want to have a mono. And that's pretty easy to do with Audacity here. Basically, all you do is you uh, do what I did here, just open it up, drag it in there. And you can click on this little drop down at the top and go to split stereo to mono. So that was right here where it says the name of it. And you can just X one of them out and then file, export. I usually do AUG, those seem to work well with OpenAL. But yeah, let's go ahead and do it. So I'm just going to annotate this one with mono. So that's the one we'll want to load if we want to do effects with this spell. So that's pretty important to know when you're doing this and messing with directional stuff. Leave a comment below. What should we do next time? What should I cover next? I feel like I've actually covered most of this library. There's a lot of little niche things, but I could make one little final demo of like being in a 3D world and it all working. That might be a good last video. Let me know what you guys think below. Matt from Code Tech and Tutorials. Over and out. Appreciate you guys watching. It's been quite a journey. We did hit over 2K subs, which is amazing. I I don't know what to think. <laughs> it's a lot of people. So that's that's awesome. It's just it's just cool to see. And I appreciate all you guys. And I'm always uh listening. If there's any certain thing, I'm not sure what content to make anymore. I know a lot of people are here for Blender, a lot are here for the coding stuff, a lot are here for the talks. So Trying to figure all that out a little bit. I appreciate your guys' uh, support going through this. I wish you all the best during these trying times. See you next time.